Hello and welcome to our Pro Advisor Q&A. My name is Arij Mishergi and I lead a team of over a thousand people at Intuit who are focused on serving small businesses around the world that are interested in using QuickBooks with the assistance of an expert, either an expert in the form of an accounting professional who has an independent practice like many of you, or through a QuickBooks Live bookkeeping expert. I'm here with Ted Callahan and Alex Chris. Ted is on my team and leads the business at Intuit focused entirely on you, our partners in the accounting community. Those of you may know me, those of you who know me may know that uh, I was in Ted's role just a few short months ago, and we're really excited for Ted to lead such a critical space. Alex is the executive vice president and general manager of the uh, small business self-employed group here at Intuit. Alex leads over 4,500 people with a uh, focus on powering prosperity around the world for small businesses and the self-employed. So let's cut to the chase. We made some really big announcements about pricing and discounts this week, including retiring the current wholesale discount, which has been around for eight years. We're here today to answer and respond to as many of your top questions as we possibly can. I wanna thank everybody who submitted questions in advance. We got over 700 questions and they were ranging, they really spanned the gamut, ranging from, why are you making these changes to how is Intuit going to communicate the changes to your clients to what's the plan for QuickBooks desktop? You can ask us anything. You can go into the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen and type your question. You can also upvote other people's questions, which is really helpful to us because it helps us identify the uh, questions that you want answered most. I mean, we certainly won't be able to answer everything, but we are going to address those with the most interest. We have a whole team here answering questions in the Q&A section in writing uh, for those that we're not able to take. And after the event, we're also summarizing questions on firmofthefuture.com, our blog. Alex, I'd love to start with you um, and your reflection on the journey, I suppose, that, that QuickBooks has taken this past year and where you see us going looking forward. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Arij. And uh, it's wonderful to, to be here with all of you today. Thank you for taking the time. I know, I know how valuable your time is, but these are important changes. And, uh, and we wanted to make sure that uh, we were here to answer any of your questions and make sure that there's just crystal clarity as we go forward. You know, look, there's three things I want to do just to set context. One, just uh, level set on the reality of our current situation, where we are. Um, two, just share a little bit of what we've heard from customers. Uh, what we're seeing in the market. Uh, and then third, just make sure you hear from me our commitment to you uh, as our core partner uh, in, this, uh, in this journey serving small businesses. So first, the reality of where we are. Look, this has been uh, an incredibly challenging year. Um, you know, when I reflect back, there was no playbook. Uh, there were no instructions that came with this past year. Um, and we all uh, have been leaning in to help small businesses be uh, as successful as possible. And I know and appreciate and just want to thank you for everything that you all have done, both as partners to us, uh, but, but even more importantly, partners to small businesses. Uh, and as many of you are small businesses yourselves, you know, you, you've been struggling as well. And so, again, my hope is, you know, we are starting to see, you know, some light at the end of the tunnel. But I just want to recognize just how difficult this past year has been. And, and again, thank you for the partnership and uh, your dedication to helping our, our small businesses. But that does lead me to, to what we're seeing now. You know, we, we have been tracking uh, the small business uh, economy, the growth, uh, basically every day, every week for the past year. And uh, I am really inspired with what I'm seeing out of small businesses now. You know, they have done what we expect them to do. They pivoted, they persevered, they figured out how to survive. And now the energy and the enthusiasm coming from small businesses, I talk to dozens of them every week, uh, and they are absolutely, there's, there is uh, energy coming from them right now as they look into the future. But their expectations are changing. Uh, and what we're seeing from them is a change in their expectation. They are now realizing there are things in the past that are no longer optional. Being online is not optional. Uh, leaning into some form of commerce is not optional. Uh, thinking about how they would uh, re react if there was another pandemic or another shutdown and how they would serve their customers is top of mind from them. And so those are the questions they're asking us. It's what they're looking uh, for us uh, to deliver from a product standpoint. So 
you know, you see innovations coming from us from banking all the way through to commerce to moving up market with advanced. All of this innovation is coming from customers' requests and expectations on us. And that really leads to the strategy. You know, many of you have heard me talk about this transformation we're leading through in QuickBooks, going from the source of truth just for your books to really being a platform and an ecosystem for the business of small businesses, being the source of truth for their business. And this is what we're hearing from customers. They want one place where they can come in and have integrated services from accounting to payroll, to banking, to time tracking, to commerce, uh, to even the front office, all in a single place where they can really be as efficient as possible and have one place where, uh, where they can help run their business. And that's, that's the journey that we're on. That's the strategy that we have and that's the ecosystem that we're going to provide. The second thing though that we've heard from them is they're still trying to figure this out and they are looking for a partner. They're looking for a software and a platform partner in us, but they're looking for advice and expertise from you. And I just want you to hear from me again, how critical you are and our dedication to you as the partner that we need to work with in order to make small businesses successful. We will help provide that platform and the software, but we need you and your expertise to partner with us to make small businesses, small businesses successful. And they're looking to you uh, for that. So we're in this together. We'll get into the details of, of everything we're announcing today. Um, and we'll make sure we answer your questions. But I just wanted you to hear that context from me. So Arij, Ted, I'll, I'll hand it back to you. Thanks, Alex. Now, Ted, with that in mind, can you take us through one of the top questions that we hear, which is why are we raising price and changing the account and discount? Caleb is asking this question right now. And we certainly got a lot of this question in advance of this conversation. Yep, <clears throat> happy to. Uh, for those of you that I haven't met Ted Callahan, the puppy in the background, also mine, apologies for that. Uh, first, I wanted to start off though, before I get into the why, to thank you all for being with us today. We have read every single one of your comments, your 742 questions that you shared with us, and they drip with your passion that comes from your dedication to your clients. Um, that same passion and dedication translates into your partnership with us. Um, when I say we wouldn't be here without you, I mean it literally. My job as the leader of our accountant business is to connect with you, our most valued partners, get your feedback and bring it back and use it as inspiration and perspiration for my colleagues to make sure we're building the best products, services, and programs that you need. And I wanna get really clear on the why. Um, the fundamental reason why we're doing this is to invest in the vision that Alex just shared. We have to continue improving the experiences you tell us need work. Nobody holds us accountable like you. And we gotta keep growing and keeping pace with the amazing innovation we see out of small businesses. In the last two years, we've actually added, we've accelerated the rate of our connection of you to our small businesses to the tune of now 500,000 more small businesses are connected to pro advisors than two years ago. So that number I think is just staggering in and of itself, but the rate of connection has also increased. And so one of the things that you've heard Arish say numerous times on the stage of QuickBooks Connect is that out there in the market, only one in five small businesses is connected to an expert like yourself. But here in the QuickBooks ecosystem, we have three out of five getting connected. And that is just exactly in line with our mission, which is about powering prosperity of small businesses. We do that through our vision with you. We've got a bold vision as Alex shared, and that is a durable vision. And when we think about what we're doing together with you, it's about growing your firm and scaling your impact. We've got really ambitious goals there, and they're driven by you and that passion that I opened with. We want to match that passion and accelerate the work that we're doing. And so the fundamental reason why we're making these changes is to fund the necessary investments in accountant support. I've been talking with a lot of you. That's the number one area of concern you're raising to me. It's not about, about the products. It's about our support of our products. We're going to be doubling down there. We're going to talk about those changes in a bit. We're also improving our current experiences, performance, speed, reliability. And critically, we're developing new, what I would call game-changing experiences for you, like month-end review. Now, we've also heard feedback, not just on the products and support, but also on the program. And we want to be making our discount be working for you better than ever. And so we're 
taking that opportunity, bringing that feedback in as we launch the new discount program. Yeah, well, and on that note, Ted, you know, you, you mentioned feedback. What have you heard um, on the wholesale discount? What feedback have you heard? And, and what are you doing about that feedback? Yeah, three, three broad themes that we've heard from you. Uh, the first is discounts are inconsistent. The second is the dis discounts don't cover everything. We talk about having an ecosystem vision. We need an ecosystem discount program. Um, the third is the discounts needed work in terms of the program around them. And so we're addressing all of those. We're introducing consistency. Not all of you want to pay for your client subscription. That's fine, right? One of our principles is we want to honor choice. And so the new discount structure accommodates this. And it's going to be the same discount for all versions of QuickBooks. Similarly, aligned to that ecosystem strategy, we're expanding the discount to include more of our offerings. For the first time, Simple Start, QuickBooks Online Payroll, and QuickBooks Time are also included, and we're going to be expanding that in the future. And finally, as I said, we're thinking beyond the discount. I'm also hearing from you, you want to see changes in our ProAdvisor program in the form of support. You want to see new changes, the furthering of that month-end review experience, and much more. And so we're taking all of that into account, Arish. As we're yeah. this. I, I hear you. And, and what I'm hearing is that, you know, when you say we're, we're doing this to accelerate our strategy, you're also saying that it's a strategy that's working to grow the number of small businesses that are connected with accountants. And that as you made these changes, you really looked at opportunities to address the top feedback about the wholesale discount. Uh, you, you answered the question on, on why we're making the change. And, and also part of that question was why now? Mm -hmm. um, so, so I want to share with the community that since you know, I, I was in Ted's role not long ago um, for a few years. I, I can tell you that the changes that we are making were highly considered. Uh, we've been exploring these for over two years, well before the pandemic, looking at industry benchmarks and the continued growth and value of our offering as a way to fuel the next round of innovations. Uh, but we, we held off. Um, now that we're making these changes, Ted and I thought really deeply about how to do this. And we also were principled in our thinking there. So we understand the, pr the principles that we used were this. We understand the importance of durability and mis minimizing disruption for your practice, which, which is why we left that wholesale discount unchanged for eight years. It's also why we have every intent for this next iteration of the accountant discount to be just as durable. We want to respect the way that you operate. We know that each time that a change happens, you got to work with your uh, clients to manage that change. And that's why we're combining the QuickBooks Online discount change with the price change. And we want to give you time to plan. That's why you're the first group to hear about these changes. And before we've shared with, with the accountant community, we shared with smaller groups of accountants to get feedback and bookkeepers to get feedback, including members of the accountant council that we work with really closely and more. Um, and when we went, you know, more when we shared this publicly, we shared it with the accountant community before any other group. And it's also why you have 45 days notice on changes impacting new clients and uh, 90 days notice on changes that impact existing clients. So, so Ted, now let's get into the details uh, to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, we have a question from uh, Boma Osime, uh, which is good morning, please. You know, what happens with our clients under the wholesale discount? How's it gonna affect our client's price? And if it will, will we also be paying uh, the new price? Um, and if they downgrade, how will that be affected? So, so let's break it down um, and let's start with the QuickBooks online price. We'll get to the discount, but starting with the QuickBooks online price, what exactly is changing? Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks for uh, separating that, that question, which had a lot in it, into the individual piece parts. Those, the way that I think about price is there's the list price, there's your discount, and then there's what you or your client pay. And so as Ari said, we're going to focus first on that list price or the retail price. So since our last price increase, which was two years ago for QuickBooks Online, we've added a ton of value. I want you all just to reflect in the last year, um, things that we've shipped like tags, projects. Um, I know a lot of you love sort by closed date or sort by reconcile date, right? Those just little features just make it easier to move through the product. Um, and then think about statement auto import. We've expanded our coverage of banks from um, 25% to over 50% of all banks in the United States with Wells Fargo, which we added a couple months back. So adjusting our price supports all of that expanded functionality 
as well as it enables us to invest in some of the improvements I already spoke about and some of the future innovations that have been coming that Alex mentioned in his walkthrough of our vision, QuickBooks Cash, Money by QuickBooks, QuickBooks Commerce. There's a lot of information on the slide. I want you all just to kind of focus on, we've, we've broken this into three pieces to talk about the timing of the change. You can see at the bottom of the slide, the price increase. So for new customers, Essentials Plus and Advanced will in, have their price increased on July 15th, okay? For clients who are billed direct, right? So this is the bill my client um, functionality. They're gonna be notified July 1st. That price will go into effect August 1. We're telling you a month in advance, as we mentioned, because you're our priority partners, we wanted you to be prepared. You want, we want you to hear it from us first. Finally, as you see on the far right-hand side, September 1, that is when your, um, the clients that you are paying on behalf of, right, your current wholesale discount, that price increase is gonna go into effect September 1st. And again, just to close, we have not announced this broadly yet to small businesses to make sure that you are the first to know. Back to you, Rish. Yeah, um, I'm just going through some of these questions. So, so thanks, for, thanks for taking us through that, Ted. Mm -hmm. um, before we move on, I, I also, you know, we got dozens of questions that were already submitted today. And as I mentioned, hundreds that were submitted before today. For those of you who've joined us um, since I shared this, go ahead and click on the Q&A section at the bottom to uh, ask a question. You can upvote other people's question, which helps us land on the top questions to answer live. Um, so, so Ted, um, Boma's question was, was pretty broad, so I want to get to the other pieces. Can you share with us more about what the price change means for existing customers on wholesale? Many people are asking about that. So what exactly will change for existing wholesale discount customers? Yeah, yeah, and we have gotten a lot of questions and requests for clarification. So what is change for all subscriptions, regardless of the billing model, whether it's wholesale or not? is that retail price, okay? So your discount is not changing. Your discount remains the same. The retail price is increasing. So let me start off with what is not changing. For any client you currently have on the wholesale discount or any client that you add between now and July 15th, they will keep the existing discount. You can see what that is on the slide. 50% across self-employed essentials plus, 30% on advanced. So let me say that again. What is not changing for any client you currently have on the wholesale discount or anyone that you add before July 15th, they keep the existing discount. Now, additionally, we've gotten a lot of questions about promotional packages like our multi-company discount or what we call our five for 25. These discounts are also not changing. Um, and as, as we just mentioned, we've been really working to get our communications crisp and clear for all of you because we know how critical that is when you're working with your clients. One of you summed it up really well. You actually have a career in marketing, I think, which is price goes up, discount remains the same for my current wholesale clients. So I, I think that's very helpful. Um, the last thing I wanna say on this slide is on September 1st, if your firm is paying, the list price will increase for essentials plus in advance. The current discount levels remain the same. That's true for anyone right now and anyone you add before July 15th. So let's go through a couple of examples because what we found is talking about it in this high level way isn't as impactful as letting you see it in some specifics. Okay, perfect. So um, let's use an example of you've got a client on essentials today. You're receiving 50% off the current price of $40. So you're paying $20. Now, when we go to September, right? Because this client is on wholesale, we, you have 90 days to prepare. Starting on the billing cycle that happens in September, the retail price is gonna go from $40 to $50. Your discount remains the same. So you're gonna be billed $25 or $5 more a month for that client. So just let that sink in. And then we'll move on to another question that we've gotten. Yeah, I'm glad, um, I'm glad we're, we're going there. I um, also want to, uh, just recognize the question that we're getting about the five for five bundle. Sorry, there's so many questions coming in. Randy is asking about the five for five bundle. Is that something we can, or five for 25 bundle, is that something we can address? Yeah, well, um, Ted? absolutely. Randy, thank you for the question. We actually have that next again, because we've been hearing a lot of questions on that. Let me talk through this one, because this is one that we also got um, from a number of you, which is 
this example is if you have got a client who has the payroll wholesale discount and also is on QuickBooks Online Plus. So that's what we wanted to talk to here so that you can see. Okay. And so we'll get to the promo. Let's let or the promotional. Let's talk about um, a client with QBO and payroll first. Yeah. Sorry about that, Ted. Sounds good. No, no, no. All fine. Um, so now in this example, um, what I want to call out is we recently um, changed our payroll um, lineup. There is no change right now on the wholesale um, discount for payroll. And there is no change on the payroll price. Okay, so there's no change to the payroll price for existing subscribers. In this scenario, the client has QBO plus and our core payroll with the wholesale discount. And what you see here is that effective September 1st, again, because they're on the wholesale, the only change is to that QuickBooks Online Plus price. It goes from 70 to 80. And so the 50% discount applies. You're going to see that $5 increase. So it's $40 a month starting in September. No change to payroll. Might make sure that's clear for everybody because we, we got a number of questions on this as well. Yeah, that's okay. super helpful. And I'll make sure to bring up the follow-up questions on payroll. Um, Ted, yeah. anything else on payroll before I read for yeah. you Randy's question? Yeah, let's get to Randy's question. Okay. Yeah. So Randy's question was, I was told when signing up with the five for 25 pricing that it would be valid going forward at the same price without increase, as long as the plan was maintained. We told the client this when selling it. Is that not the case anymore? Or is this only on new purchases? Yeah, great, great question. Um, if we, we've got, a, we've got actually a scenario on wholesale. So let's go, or sorry, on promotional bundles. So let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> so many of you have asked about our five um, for $5 promotional bundles. And, and some of you may not have heard about these. We don't sell them anymore. All right, so this is almost like an artifact of the past. We could, okay, perfect, we're on the next slide. Um, so we have had um, different flavors of these bundles in the past. We've had those that Randy was talking about, which had no promotional term on them. It was the life of the subscription. And then we also had subsequent versions of this that had a five-year term and then a two-year term, okay? so. The, the answer on this is gonna vary depending on which term length that you've got. And so in this example, what we're showing you is you're in a world today where the current retail price is 70, you're paying the promotional price of $5. When your promotional term ends, right? So for those that are on lifetime, this doesn't apply, but if you have a promotional term that had a two year or a five year length, after September 1st, when that term ends, the new retail price would apply. So it would go from 70 to 80. You'd keep your existing wholesale discount because that subscription was started at that point in time. We're honoring that, that discount and the terms of the agreement. Then the price would move to the current price of 80 less the discount, so $40, okay? Let me just end, Randy, your specific question. If you got one of those early bundles that was $5 for the life of the subscription, it remains $5 for just that, the life of the subscription. That's super helpful, Ted. Um, so, so I also want to take this opportunity to answer one of the top questions that was shared in advance of uh, in advance of this session. So mm -hmm. Several people asked, "How long will we be honoring the wholesale discount for clients that are on it right now? This this legacy discount that we're no longer offering." Mm -hmm. um, I think this applies for for the scenario that Randy was talking about too. Um, because it was submitted early, I actually got a chance to look at the text of the term so that I could read it to you. Um, so I'm just going to pull it up here. So I'm reading you the actual terms. Um, the discount is avail available for the client, or sorry, the, the discount is available for the current list price for the lifetime of the subscription. So those are the terms, and we will continue to honor the terms. Um, we have a couple of questions. I'm going to switch gears a little bit. And Alex, I'm going to ask you this question. Um, Caleb has a few examples looking historically at the cost of our subscriptions and just you know, projecting in the future about what the, the cost might be looking ahead. Um, and so I'll, I'll read you uh, one of Caleb's, uh, kind of an excerpt from Caleb's question. And it is, you know, I, I'm not thrilled with the new expectation that the price will increase, that the price increases will happen annually at around 10 bucks a year. That would mean that in five years from now, QBO Essentials would be priced at 100 bucks for the base price, and Plus would be priced at 130 for the base price. 
Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm going to extract a question there, which is like, how do you think about price increases and what can we expect going forward, Alex? Yeah, it's a great question. And so let, let me, so first of all, you should not expect $10 price increases every year. That's not how we think about it. But let me unpack how we think about it. At the very highest level, we price to value. We also make sure that we're listening to our customers and our customers' expectations are changing. It's back to what I said at the beginning from a strategy perspective. They are looking to us to drive innovation into the product. That reduces their needs on other products, on other features, on other things that they're paying for, and it saves them time and it saves them money. So the feedback that we're getting from customers is drive more innovation into QuickBooks. We have added more innovation in the product in the last 24 months than in the past 10 years combined. And we're hearing the feedback from our customers that they love it and they want more. Our, actually, we, we track our satisfaction from our customers. Our PRS has never been higher than it is right now. And the feedback from customers is more. We need more features. We need to be able to compete in the market. We need to be able to continue to innovate in this new rapidly changing world. And so please continue to invest in QuickBooks. And so that's what we're going to continue to do. In order to do that, we will continue to price to value. As we add the appropriate features, uh, we have an entire team that is studying price and ensuring that we don't get out over our skis in terms of you know, raising price into a, into a place that's unsustainable. So just know that our commitment is we will always price to value. Uh, we will always study that and get feedback from customers, but we are also committed to continuing to innovate rapidly so that uh, we are serving our customers' needs as they continue uh, to compete in their market. Thanks, Alex. Um, I'm going to take us to a question that Don is asking, um, and I'm going to ask this of you, Ted. Um, so, you know, you shared, you know, what 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 the wholesale discount will be going forward. Don's question is, what will be the wholesale prices for all online products? And I'm assuming that's forward looking, um, since we've answered, you know, what's happening with the existing wholesale. So, what's changing in the discount for new customers, Ted? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> thanks, Arish. So after eight years, we're retiring the current wholesale discount for new customers. Just want everybody to sit with that for a second. And we're introducing what we're calling our Pro Advisor Preferred Pricing Program. So this is effective July 15th, as you can see on the slide, for new clients and then existing clients who change their subscription, right? They move to a different product, an upgrade or a downgrade. So let's get into it. Um, the, the first big call out that I want you all to see, and if, it's, if you remember one thing, it's that we now have a consistent 30% discount off QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Online Payroll, and QuickBooks Time. 30%, simple. We took your feedback. A lot of you said, look, self-employed, um, that, that's not actually where I need to be getting my customers in. I want them to be on Simple Start when they start their relationship with me, with you. Uh, so we've, at, we've taken that feedback and we've added Simple Start into that. So it's a critical change based on your feedback. We're no longer going to offer the discount on self-employed. The other thing that I've been hearing from a lot of you uh, that you're excited about with this change is that the 15% off our user fees, whether they're employees or contractors on both payroll and time, really as a benefit to your clients that have a lot of employees or contractors. So similar today, you see we have two billing options. If your firm pays, that's what we're calling our Pro Advisor discount, and that is the ongoing discount month after month after month. Now, we know that some of you don't want to pay for QuickBooks for your clients. You want them to get a great discount, but you don't want to be in between us and them when it comes to the price they're paying. So we've solved for that as well. If you want your client to pay, you do just like today, you start their subscription inside QBOA, QuickBooks Online Accountant, and then indicate they're gonna be paying and they'll get that 30% discount for 12 months and then it'll go to the retail price. And again, if I just pull back um, for a second, I want you all to um, see, as Alex said, we've got teams that study not only the price but also the discounts across. Um, these are the best discounts that we offer at QuickBooks. And when we look across the market, they are industry leading. They exist solely for you because of our relationship with you as our top partner. I also wanna share, I worked hard, we worked hard to get approval from Legal Bill to share this. We're working really hard on adding RevShare. We've heard from you, you want a revenue share option. 
And so look um, for us to be sharing more information about that in the coming months. We're using your feedback to guide other ways we can be expanding the program in the future. So please keep that passion um, in the comments coming so that we can be making the program exactly what you need to do the work you're trying to get done with your clients. Yeah, we're, we, that's great, Ted. We're getting a lot of questions about how people will benefit from this. I, I'm actually going to take us to another one and then get right back to that. Yeah. Um, so the question I want to answer first, just because it's related to some of the things we're talking about now, is also from Caleb. Um, Caleb has several suggestions on making the QBO multi-entity offer better. Um, and so, uh, you know, Ted, you and I can review those offline and, you know, thank you everybody for your feedback and thank you, Caleb, for your feedback specifically. Um, I wonder if we could spend a minute just specifically talking about multi-company and what's changing there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for those of you who haven't heard of this, again, this is a, a program that we had in the past. So multi-company, um, it was a promotion that was designed especially for clients that had multiple companies. So these are um, your really entrepreneurial clients who start, they just, they're this fount of energy and new company starts, right? Um, and so it's designed for those profiles where they've got multiple companies and we want to reduce the cost of having multiple QuickBooks Online subscriptions for them. And we actually, because we've gotten a lot of questions on multi-company, Caleb, you've been consistent on this one, we created a slide to talk this one through. So if we can pull that slide up. Um, so you, there's a lot of information on this slide. So I'm just gonna like pause for a second and I wanna orient you to the right-hand side, okay? So this is what's gonna be happening July 15th going forward for new clients. Uh, not this slide, sorry. Let's go to this next slide that's on multi-company. Perfect, okay. So right-hand slide, so now let me like orient you on this one. So this is a slide detailing the multi-company discount. So on and on and then after July 15th, the new multi-company discount will be the following. You buy one copy of QuickBooks Online Plus at your ProAdvisor discount price, then you can add up to 10 companies for $20 each per month for two years. So the, the parent subscription is a, the discount price, the child subscriptions, those 10 that you can add are $20 each per month for up to two years. So now let's talk about if you um, add a, if you've got the multi-company bundle or you add it between now and July 15th, what happens for those? That's the left-hand side. So if you look at that side, what you'll see is that after September 1st, and I know the dates that we've got a lot of dates, we've been told, hey, this is confusing. Just wanna back us up. The reason we're doing this is so that you've got time to prepare your clients. So in this example, the price doesn't change until September 1st because you've got that client on your wholesale discount. The only thing that's going to change on that is the price of QuickBooks Online is going to change, as you can see in this example, from 70 to 80. Your current wholesale discount of 50% applies. So the, the price that you would then be paying for the parent account is $40 a month. As we said earlier, um, in response to, I think it was Randy's question, the child account price, we honor that for the promotional term that remains that $5 per month until the term is completed. And then after that, you still keep your wholesale discount on the child companies. It's then just based on the new price of QuickBooks Online Plus. Okay, I reach back to you. Thanks, Ted. I'm um, synthesizing a few questions together. We've got I mean, over 200 questions just live in the room right now. So trying to pull a few of them together. Um, we have questions from Mark and Tim about the value that's being added as a result of this increase. Um, and I, I'll read something from Don, um, who, who is agreeing with Kristen, who says, you know, look, many times I know, uh, many times I know more than the support agent and I have to walk them through where to find functions and support calls now take forever. How will this price increase fund better support? more agents, better trained. How are you thinking about that, Ted? I know this is an area you're super passionate about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm so fired up um, to be able to talk about this one because uh, in my first six months on, in this job, um, getting to talk with all of you in one-on-one -on -one conversations and in, in larger group conversations, I've heard from you, your number one beef with us is that support isn't getting the job done that you need it to for you or for your clients. And so we have heard you um, we've heard how important it is for you to have quality support when you need it. 
and we have started to execute a plan that I'm gonna, I'm really excited to share with you. Um, the headline to this plan is we're bringing your support, our pro advisor support back on shore, okay? We're gonna make sure that we can recognize who you are when you call in. And, and the other call out I wanna make for all of you is I'm hearing from you when you're using the callback feature now that you see when you're on our site, um, you're getting the, an expert that has the knowledge that you need and it's a much more satisfactory experience. So what we're doing, we're bringing ProAdvisor support back on shore. We're making sure we know who you are. We're getting you to the right expert and we're gonna be reducing the whole time significantly. We've already hired hundreds more agents to support you and we're training them um, rapidly so that you will see a marked improvement, market improvement um, on our speed to answer or that callback function in the next 60 days. And I know you're going to hold us accountable to that. We're going to continue to provide updates on how this is going. We've also heard, um, going to exactly to, um, uh, I forget the woman's name who's asking the question, the level of knowledge, the training needs to be increased. And so we're, we're going to be solving that in a couple of ways. One, the profile of these new experts that we're adding in is we're doing some deep tests on what would it look like if we had those of um, in our support community who had more accounting knowledge. And so we're looking to actually change the profile for some of those support agents and, and see, can that get your questions resolved better and faster? We're also leaning into and improving the training that we're providing, especially on things like payroll, where we know we need deep expertise to handle, to handle the questions that you're asking, but really we're improving training across the board. And so, as I said, we've been <laughs> executing this plan for several months. Now we're ready to talk about it. Um, we're upping our game as we bring these agents back on shore. And so you should see a real improvement in the speed to answer and the quality of your experience getting the answers that you need um, and then the speed of getting those um, questions resolved. So we hope all of these changes are gonna just make a massive improvement in your experience. Hey, hey Ted, let me, I'd like to just jump in real quick, um, if you don't mind. So first of all, thank you for, for, um, for detailing the answer and everything you said on what we're working on um, is absolutely true. I also just wanna be um, blunt. You know, we, we have a saying here that we're constructively dissatisfied with different things. I am, I am quite dissatisfied with the state of our um, support for you all. Um, it, is, it is one of the things that um, we identified a few months back, uh, which is then uh, put into motion the, uh, the plan that Ted has there. But my expectation is this will improve. It will improve quickly. Uh, and this will be a journey that we're going to need um, your feedback and continued partnership on. But I just want you to hear directly from me. I am not satisfied with where we are. We must improve uh, to be able to support you in a, in a much, much better way. So it is something we are on. We're dedicated uh, to investing in and we, we will improve. Thank you. I, I know this is an area of, um, of passion for Ted and Alex has been nothing but super supportive on this front. It's really exciting that we're bringing pro advisor support on shore, that we're increasing staffing to reduce hold times with hundreds of people already onboarded and hundreds more like on the way shortly. I mean, significantly extending our training efforts to increase agent skills over the course of six months, because we know that experts need a higher caliber of support. You need a higher caliber of support, particularly in payroll, but across the board, and ensuring that all pro advisors get, get rooted to the, to the right queue so that you get the highly trained experts quickly. Super, super exciting. I am um, I'm going to, to ask a question by an anonymous attendee. Um, and the question is this, it, you know, open Alex or Ted, whoever wants to take this one, it seems to me that QBO is gearing its features and price toward large deep pocket businesses. It's frustrating. Most of my clients have been, and, and annoying, most of my clients have, have between one and five employees and no employees with annual net revenue uh, or, or no employees with annual net revenue between zero or $10,000. The constant barrage of ads about QBO Advance is annoying. They just don't need that. Um, and there's more here, but I think the question for you, uh, for both of you is, how do you think about serving these small businesses? Yeah, let me, let me actually just jump in on this one. Um, so first of all, um, we, we have an, a, a strategy to serve small businesses from you know, the moment they start um, all the way through to, to mid-market. 
Um, you will see continued investment in our QBO Advanced product. Um, it is growing quite well, and the feedback we're getting from customers uh, and from you all is that you're you're loving the innovation that's coming in there. And you know, frankly, for a business that that started and grew up in in the QuickBooks franchise, we want them to stay with us um, as long as possible. And we think there's a lot of runway for us to continue to develop features. We also know that our, our bread and butter and where we started is is with. Um, you know, small businesses that are just getting started. Uh, and, and actually the data that we're seeing and the customers that work that are coming in um, uh, is actually quite different than, uh, than the question. And so, you know, there have been more new business starts in the US in the last nine months than we've ever seen in the last decade. Uh, and we have seen more growth in QuickBooks uh, from companies coming in that are new starts, new to the world, small businesses using QuickBooks with a, a satisfaction score off the charts um, that we are super excited about. So we will continue to make the product easier, make features and functionality that help uh, the newest small businesses get started uh, and ramp their business up successfully. And we are committed to, as you know, everything from self-employed all the way through to mid-market. So our investment and our strategy spans uh, spans um, the entire small business spectrum. And I just want you all to know our investment in ensuring that you know, every new to the world business that, uh, that wants to be as successful as possible um, is using our platform. Thanks, Alex. You know, there was a, a question um, that I think was resolved. I think Mark McCraw asked a question about support. I don't see it here anymore, but it was something to the effect of like, hey, you're advertising 24 seven support, but you don't have support on Sundays. I don't know off the top of my head, the details of this, but I will look into that. I mean, we of course hold integrity above anything else. And so we wanna honor what it is that we promise. Um, and this is new for me. Ted, Ted if you, do you have any knowledge or is this something we should take back? Say like, that sounds. Um, I, I'd love to. I, I didn't see the question, Arij. So I, I think let's take that one offline and follow up with Mark um, directly. Let's make sure team. Let's get Mark's uh, you know mid contact information so we can take that one. Yeah. Thanks for that, Ted. Awesome. Um, so I got this question quite a bit, Ted. I'm, I'm going to continue with you. I got this question quite a bit ahead of the session, and that is. How will wholesale billing clients be notified about the changes that we're making? Is there a template that uh, accounting professionals can use to communicate with their clients? Yeah, good, good question. And let me, um, so how are we gonna help you communicate? 100%, let's, let's talk about that. Um, for those of you that have your client on the, the firm build or your wholesale discount, we understand that you have different practices. Um, some, some of you pass that discount along, others of you bundle that in with your service. Um, and because of that, we have a principle not to communicate the price change to your client. We honor your relationship with your client and how you do business with them. Um, that's because we understand the role that you play. Um, and that also means the implication is you're the one then on the front line communicating the news about a price increase, a choice that we have made. Um, we know that puts you in, a, in a, uh, a painful spot. And so what we've done is we've developed, um, if you go to our Firm of the Future article in the Q&A section, we actually have a fact sheet for you that you can use the language and share it directly with your clients. This is again, because we heard from you, hey, that would really be helpful. Um, that makes it clear this is into its business decision, not my own. Um, our goal in being here with you today and why we've got Firm of the Future is to give you all of that information so that you can take that. Let me just close. So that's all in the world of you. We're talking about the wholesale discount where you are owning the billing. If your client pays for their subscription, we notify them beginning on July 1. Um, again, and that's just going to the principle of the person that has that billing relationship is the person who is gonna be handling the communication. Thanks, Ted. Um, I'm gonna answer a question that Lisa's asking and then we're gonna to get to payroll. There were lots of questions about payroll as well. Um, Lisa was, or sorry, Lynn Kerr was asking for a list of questions and answers to be sent by, uh, by email. Um, Lynn, uh, firmofthefuture.com is our blog, firmofthefuture.com, has a summary of questions and answers uh, which we'll continue to build on, which are the top questions that we've received. And we will follow up with an email to this group with a link to that site as well. 
Um, Ted, question for you on payroll. Um, how are we handling the transition of Intuit Online payroll payroll clients? Yeah, so let me um, provide a little bit of context on this. Um, we, we've been hard at work, um, as I mentioned in, earlier, talking about payroll, to launch a new lineup that is QuickBooks Online Payroll. And part of that hard work also then means moving, um, moving folks off the Intuit Online Payroll set of products. Um, so that's, that's what's been going on. There was a communication that went out about this earlier in the spring that caused a lot of confusion. That was our mistake. We didn't communicate that well. We totally own that. Okay. So let me help clean up some of the confusion on this. Um, there's we're, we're moving different. Um, we're moving different subscribers at different times. So the headline for all of you, right? For all of our accountants that are serving clients on IOP, you are going to be able to complete the year of 2021 uninterrupted on IOP. You're not going to have to make a transition in the middle of the year. We understand making a payroll change is massive. It's only something you want to do um, at, at your end. And so we're honoring the way that you work. Okay. So you will not be asked to move before then. For some small businesses who don't have an accountant, they actually want to get moved faster. We've already begun that transition for those businesses. And so that's where some of this confusion came up. And so in 2022, what we're doing is we're making sure that everybody's got access. We actually provide, I'm not sure if all of you um, are aware of this, we actually provide our best payroll products, our online QuickBooks Online Payroll Elite for free through QBOA for you to use for your firm. Now, let's talk about when that transition happens, when we are moving your clients from IOP to the QuickBooks Online Payroll um, set of products. We take care of that. Part of the, the promise of our new payroll service is that it is full service. And so we will be taking care of that transition for you. And it, uh, for most of you, it should be seamless and literally happen within seconds. I was catching up with Stacey Kildall um, a couple of weeks back and she was ecstatic over how seamless the transition was for her and for her clients. So there's gonna be more communication on this, including specifics of, of how we move through this together, like on things like pricing. But I just wanna assure all of you, you do not have to move until um, we're done with this year, okay? I'll reach back to you for next question. Yeah, excellent. Next question is about QuickBooks Desktop. When do you plan to sunset QuickBooks Desktop, Ted? We don't. <laughs> Let me make it super simple. Uh, we, we have a strategy to support desktop until every customer chooses to migrate to QuickBooks Online or stay on desktop, okay? So I think there was a vision that, hey, that more people than not were gonna wanna move to QuickBooks Online. We recognize there's a host of reasons why people wanna stay on the desktop. We honor that choice. Uh, so we're continuing to invest in desktop. Uh, and so just, I wanna maybe hit a couple of quick points on, on all of this. Um, been talking with um, the desktop team. So we have been, um, now that we've got the clarity of, hey, we're, we're invested in the success of desktop for that set of users, we really wanna be continuing to improve the value of what we're delivering. And we're doing that with subscriptions as the place where we're gonna be driving the innovation to serve the customer's needs there. The first and topmost priority that we're trying to hit in terms of delivering value is security of your customer's data. That's our top priority. And what the subscription model does is it provides the latest product features, including critically, the most up-to-date security patches. I think we've all been put on notice in the last year of how critical um, keeping your security patches are as we watch things like gas pipelines get shut down, meat um, packing plants get locked up. So ensuring your clients are updating on the latest security patches, we do that through the subscription. And also, there's a lot of third-party operating system changes that are happening. We need to provide support for those. Two more points about um, what that subscription provides. You get data backup as part of that and unlimited care as part of that subscription. So desktop is here to stay, and um, that's the host of benefits that we're providing on that. Thanks, Ted. Um, Jonathan Aldama is asking, uh, it added a comment here uh, that I'd love to address. It was also something I was asked before, which is, uh, you know, stop offering bookkeeper support through Intuit. This is our business and you're offering it as a, at a discount. Um, and the question that we got 
in advance of this was similar, which is why is QBO actively competing with, with uh, the folks on the phone, with, with, with many of you, um, by offering live bookkeeping services. So I, I wanted to take a second and, uh, and address this myself. What motivates me in this role, both as leading the QuickBooks Live team, as well as our accountant business, it's that we share the same mission, and that's to help small businesses succeed. When a small business owner works with an accountant, we know that they're more financially stable, that they're more credit worthy, that they are two times as likely to succeed. So it is success for us. It is success for me when customers connect to an accountant. Our, our mission is to help small businesses prosper, and connecting them to you is one of the major ways we do that. So Ted shared earlier uh, that it's through this passion uh, that we've increased the number of small businesses working with accountants from one to five in the country, one out of five in the country, to three out of five in our ecosystem, and we are not done. We succeeded in getting 60% of small businesses in our ecosystem connected to accountants and bookkeepers, but it's just not good enough. Our focus now is on the remaining 40%, those small businesses who are not benefiting from your expertise, the ones who aren't even searching. QuickBooks Live is educating people on the value of working with experts and practices are growing as a result. Since QuickBooks Live launched, we have expanded the number of small businesses connected with independent practices. Ted shared the number, half a million of them in our ecosystem, as well as, as those who are, who are working through QuickBooks Live. So both are growing. We are growing the overall category and more businesses are benefiting from expert guidance than ever before. So, so that's what we're trying to accomplish. And so far we're all benefiting from the education campaign of the importance of small businesses working with bookkeepers. Um, so I'm very passionate about that. I see the upside, I see it in the numbers and I'm really excited about what we're able to do as a result. Um, there is another question that is similar. You know, Carmen is asking, you know, if we're paying for more service, if we're paying more for the service, it'd be great if the advertising, you know, while working could be disabled. Um, this also came up in the context of QuickBooks Live. Uh, you know, some folks are uh, prior to this had said, you know, there are ads for QuickBooks Live in the product, and I thought you weren't going to, you know, take my client. So I, I wanted to combine those two as well. You know, our, our principal with QuickBooks Live is that we do not show ads for QuickBooks Live for clients with an accountant attached. Some of you have pointed out that although we do not have ads in QuickBooks for QuickBooks Live, you and your clients see it listed in the billing and subscription portion of your client's QBO and you don't like that. So the billing and subscription page, it really represents the entire ecosystem of products and services that are available to clients. We list all of our online products and services so customers have the ability to turn them on and off anytime. We actually get requests from accountants and bookkeepers to add their QuickBooks Live, to add their clients to QuickBooks Live. We, we get those requests all the time and without that functionality, we wouldn't be able to serve them. But it only shows up if your client is paying for QBO. If you are paying for QBO, we don't show QuickBooks Live on that page and there's no way to add QuickBooks Live to your client subscription. So to summarize, we do not show ads for QuickBooks Live to customers with an accountant attached or a bookkeeper. We, we do show a billing option for QB Live unless the client's account is paid for by the accountant or bookkeeper. In that case, we don't even do that. So um, the other thing I wanted to share about this is what, what you may not know is that for customers who don't have an accountant or bookkeeper connected to their QuickBooks account, when they sign up, we try to connect them to a bookkeeper. We don't just show an ad for QB Live. We have this principle, I think Ted mentioned it earlier, it's a principle of choice. So in that situation, we put QuickBooks Live side by side with Find a Pro Advisor. And I'll tell you nine times out of 10, customers choose Find a Pro Advisor, which is awesome. That's not a problem. It's, it's, it's all in service to the same outcome and it's an outcome that I delight in. So we're really here to facilitate more connection, uh, however that shows up. Um, let's see. Therese, we're, we're getting close to time. Are we? Okay, great. Um, so, you know, with that, I think I'll, I'll, what I'd love to do is, thanks for pointing it out, Ted. I, I'd really love to go to, um, you know, to, 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 to you, Ted, and just hear, you know, after, with all these questions in mind and, you know, knowing our strategy and where you want to go, um, any closing thoughts that you'd want to share? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, 
Thank you all for being with us. Uh, we covered a lot of content. Uh, I want to point you back to Firm of the Future so you can get the client templates or just better detailed answers. Keep providing the feedback. We're going to continue to update um, those answers and add more questions as we get them from you so that you have all of the information you need to be successful with your clients. Um, to close, I'll be very brief. You've got, you have my commitment that we're going to continue working tirelessly for you. As Arij said, um, or maybe she didn't say, um, I'm built to connect and we collectively here want to be connecting with you. Um, we want to help you grow your practice and scale your impact. Our mission unites us. We, we have a shared mission of helping small businesses grow and prosper. They are the backbone of our economy. Um, thank you for your passion and your commitment. You make us better. We wouldn't be here without you. So thank you. Bye thank you. You know, we didn't get to every question today, Ted, but um, folks, you're going to get a survey link. It would be awesome if you could take that survey, let us know how we did, and um, also follow up with the Firm of the Future article so you can refer back there and share your thought. The feedback that we got today and your questions fuel us, fuel us to do more and do better for you. Um, I'm super excited about our strategy and the, the direction that we're heading, and I'd love to hand it to you, Alex, to, uh, to close us out here. Yeah, let me, I appreciate it. Let me go back to where we started. First of all, thank you for joining today. Thank you for continuing the dialogue. Uh, we will get to every one of your questions and we'll make sure that, um, you know, as new questions pop up, um, we're here for you. You know, when I look into the future uh, and just having talked to so many small businesses um, over the last few months, I am so excited about, about the future of small business. Um, as I said, we have more small business starts than we've ever seen before. We have more energy and excitement from small businesses that are seeing the opportunities in front of them and looking uh, to continue to, to grow their businesses. And I think this is a renaissance for small business. I think the next few years are gonna be absolutely incredible. Uh, I also know that the feedback and the, the asks we're getting from small businesses is to help them be successful, innovate like crazy, give them the opportunities to, to level the playing field with all their competitors and lean into the future. And we're gonna do that as well. Uh, and we also know we have to do that in partnership with you. So let's keep the dialogue going. You are the most critical partners that we have. And so we appreciate your feedback uh, and any thoughts that you have for us. And, uh, and let's do this for our customers together. So thank you again for joining today. Uh, it was great to talk to you all and uh, I'm sure we'll talk soon. Take care, everybody. Thanks everyone.